to just be able to share uh, what God is doing through our partnership, uh, through the preaching of the gospel in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, in Mozambique. I bring greetings from my family uh, back home uh, in Zimbabwe right now. I also bring greetings from the team that I work with, uh, our team. You know, this is just part of the team. I bring greetings, you know, from them. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably three or four years, you know, since I was last here. Uh, and especially during the last two years, you know, we have been going uh, through the coronavirus pandemic, you know, globally. Uh, something that has brought a lot of disruptions in our lives, uh, brought a lot of discouragement, brought a lot of death, you know, of people, of things. But I also believe that this season that we have been going through has also presented us with an opportunity. You know, Paul says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, he says, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. You know, Paul is saying that we as Christians are people who have got hope. You know, we are a people of faith. And Paul is saying because of the hope that we have, because of the faith that we have, we need to be bold. We need to be bold about certain things in our lives, not only to, to believe them, to embrace them, but to be able to boldly proclaim them. And so I want to bring a word of encouragement and challenge to us to say, I hope that in the last two years, three years, even as we have gone through all of the challenges, the disruptions, the confusion, you know, and all of that, I hope that we as Christians have stood out as people who have got hope, people who have got faith. And I hope we have been boldly declaring certain things to those that are around us. So I believe because of the hope that we have, because of the faith that we have, there are things that we need, like Paul said, to boldly proclaim. Number one, I believe that we need to boldly proclaim that God is with us. You know, I don't know how it was here, especially as the pandemic broke out, but back in Zimbabwe, people began to ask the question, why? Why is this happening? And God, where are you as all of this chaos and confusion and disruption is happening all around us? You know, I believe that life has got a way sometimes of throwing things at us, things that cause us to ask those kind of questions sometimes, like, God, where are you? God, why is this happening to, to me? Or why is this happening to us? And so as people began to ask those questions and, you know, have those kind of feelings, you know, I believe it gave us an opportunity to boldly proclaim that we may not understand what is happening. You know, we may be going through disruption, you know, and discouragement and death, but God is with us. You know, his, his name in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, you know, when the angels announced the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, they say, his name shall be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 31, you know, the Bible says, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. And so, yes, we, we have been going through all these challenges, the disruptions, you know, the co co confusion, the chaos, but it has also given us an opportunity. You know, when this pandemic broke, uh, like was happening all over the world, you know, we stopped meeting uh, in our churches and, you know, because of internet challenges and uh, lack of access for a lot of people to have uh, internet, you know, the best that we could do to have our worship services was to actually send messages on people's phones. And that, again, was limited because it's not everyone, you know, who has uh, phones or access, you know, to phones. But we were able to use that you know, to send messages, to send devotions, to actually begin to have our worship services on the phones. And the, the message that we were boldly proclaiming 
was that, yes, life has been disrupted. Yes, there's chaos, there's discouragement, but God is with us. God has not forsaken us. God has not left us. And I'm delighted to share that even in the midst of all of that, we were able to actually plant two churches during this pandemic. Amen. Yes, we thank God for that. And so as I am speaking to you this morning, I don't know what you may be going through. I don't know the chaos that may be in your life right now. I don't know the disruptions that may have come into your life. I don't know, you know, maybe, uh, and I know talking to a group like this that we have all experienced, or some of us have experienced loved one uh, dying, you know, friends, you know, relatives uh, dying. But the message this morning is that God is with us. And as God releases us, unleashes us into the world, the message that we as Christians, because of the hope that we have, because of the faith that we have, uh, the message that we need to go out and boldly proclaim is that God is with us. No matter what life may throw at us, no matter what we may go through, God is with us. But secondly, I believe we have an opportunity not only to proclaim that God is with us, but to also proclaim that God shall be with us. I want to believe that this pandemic has brought to the forefront the issue of death, that we can die anytime. But also to cause us to ask the question, is death the end? I believe the pandemic has brought to the forefront of the issue of eternity. To ask the question, what happens after I die? Where do I go when I die? I want to believe that this pandemic has also brought to the forefront the issue of hope. To say, if you believe that uh, you, you are going to go somewhere after you die, on what basis are you placing that hope? So our current season, I believe, has given us an opportunity to proclaim that we have faith, to proclaim that we have hope. And because of the faith and the hope that we have, there are certain convictions that we have as Christians, certain convictions that we should have and should demonstrate. And one of that conviction is that we embrace death as inevitable. We embrace death as something that can happen Anytime. It's not to say that we walk into, you know, dangerous situations carelessly. But it is to say that we have a belief that for us, death is not the end. You know, I'm, I'm sure all of us are aware uh, or know of the story of Esther. You know, how at one time, you know, she had to go into the presence of the king uninvited. And at that time, it meant that if the king doesn't accept ye coming into his presence uninvited, she could be killed. But one of the things that she said, which has become very popular uh, with us as Christians, uh, which we find in Esther chapter 4, verse 16, Esther said, if I die, I die. And this is the conviction that we should not only preach or believe in, but we should have as we live our lives. You know, last year, as we were going through all of this, we had a team that came to visit us from here in America. I'm sure you'll see, maybe if we go back uh, one or two slides, you will see, you know, that we have a team uh, with Zimbabweans uh, and Americans there. And as we were discussing with them about coming, we went back and forth. Should we do this? Are we being responsible in wanting to do this? Are we not being careless in doing this? And as we went back and forth discussing and praying about it, we all came to the conclusion that we should go ahead and have them come and visit us. But I believe in all of that, there was also a statement that what we are doing can result in death. But if we die, we die. 
You know, as Christians, you know, our belief is that when we die, we are not walking into some unknown future. But our belief is that if we die, we are stepping into the presence of God. And so as Christians, yes, we don't make foolish decisions that result in death, but we embrace death as something that ushers us into the presence of God. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, he said, for me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gain. So as Christians, we don't shy away from adversity, from challenges, from problems when they come our way, because we believe that in, even in the midst of all of that, God is with us. And he has his way of ministering into our lives, even as we go through challenges and difficulties. As Christians, we don't shy away from death, even though it's not something comfortable to talk about, uh, but death is inevitable. And we, because of the hope and the faith that we have, as Christians, we don't shy away from the issue of death because we believe it ushers us into the presence of God. It, is, it would be ironic that as Christians we would talk about, you know, going to heaven and going into the presence of God and be afraid of dying. Amen. Amen. So I believe this current season has given us an opportunity to boldly proclaim that God is with us. That God, number two, shall be with us. You know, as when we die at our moment of death, we are not stepping into some unknown future, but we are stepping into the presence of God. Lastly, I believe this season has given us an opportunity to boldly proclaim that God cares for us. You see, in life, as we face challenges and adversity and, you know, problems, sometimes God doesn't remove those problems, but he extends his hand of grace over our lives so that we can, he can sustain us and take us through that. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, that the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth, looking for those that have put their faith in him so that he can strengthen them. The Bible says in Psalms 9, verse 18, that God will never forget the need. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. You know, I was very encouraged uh, as I walked in to see you know, the, the food and the things that we are collecting for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine right now. You know, what is happening is that at this moment, God has not taken the adversity away. God has not removed that problem away. But the Bible says that God never forgets the need. He never uh, let the hope of the afflicted, you know, to perish. So even in the midst of challenges, even in the midst of problems, God has his way of showing that he cares for us. And one of the things that excites me uh, when I come here is to be able to share what God is doing, but also to just say thank you. To say thank you for your generous, continued, faithful support of the work of the Africa Development Mission Trust. You know, when we went, as we have been going through the seasons, you know, churches not meeting as often or as we usually do, uh, giving not being as it usually is. But I want to thank you that even as we have gone through this season, your giving to the Africa Development Mission Trust has remained faithful, consistent, and we thank you for that. Um, and because of that, there are things that we have been able to do, and things that I believe in the midst of all of this have been a signal, a message to say God cares for us. 
And so I just want briefly to share with you some of the things that we have been able to do uh, during this pandemic. You know, usually we have uh, a program where every month we give food hampers uh, to certain individuals, certain families that are uh, in need, that are struggling. But, you know, during this pandemic, you know, that need exploded, became even more. Because if you were to come to Zimbabwe right now, you would find people in the streets, literally in the road, in the middle, between cars, selling stuff, you know, trying to earn a living, you know, on a daily basis. So you can imagine when the government introduced the restrictions and the lockdown, and they used the police and the army to say everybody must be indoors. People suffered, you know. And so by his grace, God enabled us not only to feed 60 or so people every month as we usually do, but to extend that. And we were able to feed about 5,000 people, you know, throughout the nation uh, of Zimbabwe and to help out families, you know, as we were going through this difficult time and this difficult uh, period. But I believe in the midst of doing that, the message was, yes, the adversity is there. The challenge is still there. The restrictions are affecting and limiting. But God was saying, I care for you. Amen. Not only that, but secondly, you will see, um, maybe in the next slide, you know, us drilling, you know, uh, wells. You know, this is one of the things that we have been able to, to do quite a lot, as Brother Dan uh, was uh, saying in introducing me. But most of the time, we were under lockdown. But during the few times we were able to be free and uh, walk around and do our business, you know, we were able to go out and drill wells. And last year in drilling wells, we drilled more wells than we have ever done in the history of the, uh, of the mission in any given year. We drilled 17 wells last year, even though we were under lockdown, yes. We praise God for that. And we were asking ourselves, how did that happen? That most of the time we were under lockdown, restricted, not able to move, only having limited time. But during that limited time, we did more than we have ever done in any given year. And I believe it was God's message and way of saying, yes, challenges are there. I have not removed this chaos, this confusion, this discouragement, but I care for you. And I'm going to provide water for you as you need it even more. Uh, not only that, we were able, you know, to continue providing, you know, sponsorship for children, you know, that we're going, that are going to school right now. We have a child sponsorship program uh, of around 300 children that are in school. And when Kids would be able to go back to school even for a limited time. You know, we were able to provide for them, you know, all that they uh, needed, you know, to be able to do that. Again, just bringing the message and the assurance of God's care and God's love. You will see in the next uh, or in this slide, there is a training school that we are building in, in Zimbabwe in an area called Mondoro. It's a facility that is going to be or is a platform to train pastors, uh, evangelists. But one of the things that we have begun to also do is to uh, train young men and women in technical skills, you know, building uh, computers. I have shared before of the high unemployment in Zimbabwe. You know, how, you know, young men and women will graduate from high school or from college, but will have limited you know, access or opportunity for formal employment. But we believe that this training school and facility creates an opportunity for them to learn skills that they can use, yes, maybe to look for a job and find one, but even if they don't, to be able to have a skill that they can use to create employment uh, for themselves or create opportunities 
for themselves, you know, to earn something. And so this school again continued, you know, to be built and we, um, you know, were able to start having these lessons. It took these young men and women two years to do a one-year training program because we would go to school uh, maybe for a month, go into lockdown, you know, come out, you know, have uh, classes for one or two months, go back into uh, lockdown. But even amidst all of that, you know, the fact that the construction was going on, the lessons were beginning to happen, I believe was a message that God cares for us. And so I don't know where this message finds you today. You know, maybe you are in that situation where there is some disruption, there is some discouragement, maybe there is some death, and you are asking the question, God, why? God, where are you? The Bible says he is with us, even in the midst of all of that. He will never leave us, he will never forsake us. I believe that in an audience like this, we have lost relatives, friends, workmates. But for us as Christians, the message to ourselves and to those around us is that death is not the end is that death does not usher us into some unknown dark future, but that death ushers us into the presence of God. And therefore, we can face it with conviction and hope and faith because that's our faith. That's what we believe, and that is the truth. I, I, I don't know uh, right now who I'm, I'm speaking to, you know, maybe in your life there are certain opportunities that have been restricted or reduced. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe your business is not doing that well because of this pandemic. But I want to believe that if each and every one of us were to be given an opportunity right now to give a testimony, amidst all of the disruptions, the death, the discouragement, I believe all of us have a testimony of how God has cared for us. And that's the God we worship, the God who is with us, the God who shall be with us even when we die, and the God who cares for us every day of our lives. And so as you pray for us, I ask that you pray that God would continue to grow our vision as the Africa Development Mission Trust. I ask that you pray that God would expand, you know, our ministry. In the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9, the Bible talks about the throne of God, you know, people being there from every tribe, every people, every language. Pray for us that God will continue to expand our ministry to reach out to every people group, every tribe, every nation. Pray, as it says in First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, that God would extend our territory of influence and our territory of ministry uh, so that more souls can come to the Lord, more territories can be claimed for the Lord, and great impact can be done in people's uh, lives. May God unleash us to go out and boldly preach, proclaim, and live out that God is with us, that God shall be with us, and that God cares for us. God bless you for having me. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning. We acknowledge your presence in our midst. Father, we acknowledge your presence in our lives and we thank you for being a God who, who doesn't leave us nor forsake us in times of challenges, but that you continue to uh, minister to us through the waking of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Father, I thank you that for us, because of what Christ did on the cross, 
because of our hope and our faith, Father, that death is not some unknown future, but that we can embrace it and step into it, knowing that you are going to be with us. Father, I thank you that you care for us every day and that you provide to meet all the needs that we have. I want to thank you for my brothers and my sisters here. Father, I pray that you would meet each and every one of them at their individual points of needs. I pray your blessing upon them as individuals, as families, and as a church. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless. If you liked what you saw here, go ahead and click on that like button. And while you're at it, for more great content, go ahead and subscribe to our channel.